Hello and welcome dear all to the another video on polymorphism in pharmaceuticals and in this topic the requirement of specification for pharmaceutical formulations for polymorphism will be discussed in detail. What are the criteria and when polymorphic specification is required and when it is considered as unnecessary. So this video we will discuss regarding the polymorphism in pharmaceuticals mainly for generic formulations and how it is going to impact the generic pharmaceutical formulation or pharmaceutical product or you can say it as drug product and how the specifications are set. So generally the generic formulations require some of the qualities which are to be fulfilled to get approval from the regulatory authorities. So approval requirements for generic product requires pharmaceutical equivalence. The generic product is required to be similar in the doses form, doses form design, route of administration and doses strength. Then requirement of the bioequivalence or demonstration of bioequivalence similarity. In this mainly for generic product pharmacokinetic similarity is demonstrated to reference product. It is also referred as reference listed drug for US market or comparator product. So bioequivalence is must for getting the approval of generic formulation. Then requirement of the stability and shelf life. So it should be equal or better than r and if possible. But in general it should be equivalent to the RLD or comparator product or the reference product. Then similar drug substance. If the drug substance of the generic formulation is different from that of the reference product then it is very difficult to justify by the generic applicant that the drug product will be similar to the innovator formulation or reference formulation or RLD. So generally the requirement is there that the generic formulation should contain the same drug substance. Many of the time the generic formulations are made with different polymorphs, different salt forms or different solvents and hydrates. So can we prove that the generic formulation in, is using the same API or same drug substance or not? So that we will discuss in the next part. So it will require your 100% attention to get the complete clarity of the topic. Generally the drug substance similarity can be shown by description, identification, chemical name, chemical formula, molecular formula or molecular structure. So if the drug substance has these similar things then then by the regulatory authorities it is considered that the generic formulation is having the same drug substance. Now you compare these things with the that's why if the generic formulation is using different polymorph or amorphous material it is approved by the regulatory authorities as the different polymorph doesn't fall into the category of different drug substance it falls into the category of drug substance similarity. Then coming to the requirement of polymorphic specifications when these polymorphic specifications are required and when these are considered unnecessary. So these decision trees are there which I have referred from the US FDA guideline and it states that when and how the specification can be set. So we will start with the basic requirements of the decision tree 1 and it is for investigating whether to set specification for polymers for oral solids and suspension formulations. So are there known polymers with different apparent solubilities? If the answer is no 
then it is unnecessary to have polymorphic form specification because there are no known polymorphs with different solubilities now if there are different polymorphs with different apparent solubility yes there are so next question will become are all the polymorphs highly soluble as per bcs and if these all polymorphs are highly soluble then also it is unnecessary to have the polymorphic form specification for both the drug substance and the drug product why because these are not affecting the critical requirements of the formulation like bioavailability dissolution stability and like this so if the different polymorphs are there they differ in the solubilities and they are not highly soluble then we have to go to decision to decision tree number 2 so here is the decision tree 2 now you have the drug substance which having the different polymorphic forms with different solubilities and the bcs solubility criteria is not meeting so then is there a polymorph specification in the usp with the different melting points if the answer is no then we have to set the new polymorphic form specification and if it is given in the usp then is the polymorph specification in the usp is relevant and adequate if it is relevant and adequate then set the same specification as per usp and if that usp specification is not relevant or adequate for your drug substance then set a new specification for drug substance polymorphic form and if the answer is for the question is the polymorph specification in the usp is relevant and adequate yes set the same specification for drug substance polymorphic form as in the usp and then if it is no then go to decision tree 3 here is the sufficient concern that polymorph specification in the drug product be established if the answer is no a polymorph specification in the drug product is unnecessary and if the answer to is there space sufficient concern that polymorph specification in the drug product be to be established is yes then does the drug product performance testing that is dissolution testing provide adequate control if the polymorph ratio changes the answer if it is yes set a dissolution set a specification of drug product performance testing like dissolution testing as a surrogate for polymorph control and if the answer is no set the polymorph specification in the drug product using other approaches such as solid state characterization method so this is very simple decision flow charts on the basis of which we can understand that whether our product is requiring the polymorph specification or not the theme behind this specification is only that whether the polymorph form present is there in the formulation or in the drug product whether it is affecting your uh, formulation performance or whether your test testing performance test like dissolution is relevant to the ratio change in the polymorphs now we will go to the polymorphism specifications as per icsq6 so here in drug substance conduct the polymorphism screen on the drug substance and can different polymorphs be formed so if the answer is no there is no action that means you have synthesized the drug substance you have screened the drug substance for presence of the different polymorphs and you have not got any polymorph or only one polymorph is there so there is no further action for the specification and if you found that 
there can be a possibility of formation of different polymorphs then characterize the forms like the testing by x-ray powder diffraction dsc thermoanalysis microscopy spectroscopy it is and go to the stage 2 do the forms have different properties like solubility stability melting point no these forms have no different solubility stability and melting point and solubility no further test or acceptance criteria so similarly to the us these points are listed in ichq6 guideline also and if there is a difference in the solubility stability and melting point in the different polymers then is the drug product safety performance or efficacy is affected if it is no then no further action if the solubility is different melting point is different and it is not affecting your safety and efficacy then no need to test further and and made a acceptance criteria but if due to the presence of different polymorphic form the safety and efficacy is affected then set the acceptance criteria for polymorph content in the drug substance and go to stage 3 so what is stage 3 now you have given the requirement of testing for polymorphism now the question comes does drug product performance testing provide adequate control if the polymorph polymorph ratio changes like dissolution if the answer is yes Establish acceptance criteria for relevant performance test and if there is answer no, monitor polymorph during stability of the drug product. Does the change occur with which could affect the safety or efficacy? The answer if it is no, no effect on the safety and efficacy, then no need to test acceptance, no need to set acceptance criteria and no need to test the further batches for polymorph change in the drug product but if the safety and efficacy is changing then establish the acceptance criteria which are consistent consistent with the safety or efficacy so now you might have understood that all the requirements of specification for polymorphic forms depends only on the effect of the polymorphic form or polymorphic form change on the safety and efficacy so whether it is dissolution whether it is impurity whether it is solubility if these things are changing then polymorphic acceptance criteria is required and one thing i have to inform all of the viewers that generally whether the polymorphic form is there or not generally the dmf holders do the polymorphic screening and they give the specification for polymorphism and also all the generic applicants do the polymorphic conversion studies and polymorphic retain polymorphic form retention studies and conversion studies based on the stability data and based on the stability studies why because there is no guarantee that your manufacturing process or the formula in the formulation or due to the storage temperature the polymorphic form will change or not there is no guarantee of that and many times it happened that the stable polymorph was selected for the some of the formulation but still that polymorphic form changed and it resulted into the decreased sol solubility decreased dissolution and decreased bioavailability so in general it is always better to have the study for polymorphism changes and polymorphic form retention and it is done on the formal stability study samples at different storage conditions like accelerated condition intermediate condition and the long term conditions so that there will be no no uh, 
possibility that the applicant has not studied the polymorphism so this is regarding the polymorphism in pharmaceuticals and specifications for polymorphs so whenever you have a product which contain the drug substance with polymorphism so always it is better to go with the polymorphism studies also for the generic formulations polymorphism of the test formulation is studied along with the reference product and in that placebo interference is checked and also the api in single uh, run is checked so that the impact of formulation on the drug polymorphic form can be studied also the impact of the polymorphism content polymorph content that means if the drug drug substance is having more than 2 3 polymorphs so their ratio should be checked to have the complete understanding i hope you might have understood many things out of this video see the polymorphism related questions are always asked in the interviews as this polymorphism affects mainly the stability shelf life period processability and the bioequivalence of the generic formulation so this is very important topic for interview point of view also many times if the polymorphic changes are there in the formulation that time after each processing stage the samples are collected for evaluation of the polymorphic form changes like granulation drying milling blending pour tablets coated tablets and the finished product stored at stability conditions thanks for watching the video please do like share and subscribe to farmal learning in depth thank you